Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. In this chapter we are going to analyze and talk about supply. For that we are going to start by defining supply and price and the relationship between them. Then we are going to talk about the supply curve and discover after that the other determinants of supply. Finally we're gonna talk about the movements along and shifts in the supply curve. So let's get started. Well, imagine you are a farmer deciding what to do with your land. Part of your land is in a fertile valley, while part is on a hillside where the soil is poor. Perhaps then you will consider growing vegetables in the valley and keeping sheep on the hillside. Your decision will depend to a large extent on the price that various, various vegetables will fetch in the market and likewise the price you can expect to get for meat and wool. As far as the valet is concerned, you will plant the vegetables that give the best return. If, for example, the price of potatoes is high, you might use a lot of the valet for growing potatoes. If the price gets higher, you may well use the whole of the valet being prepared maybe to turn to run the risk of potato disease. If the price is very high indeed, you may even consider growing potatoes on the hillside. Even though the yield per acre is much lower there. In, in other words, the higher the price of a particular farm output, the more land will be devoted to it. This illustrates the general relationship between supply and price. When the price of a good rises, the quantity supplied will also rise. There are three reasons for this. As firms supply more, they are likely to find that beyond a certain level of output, costs rise more and more rapidly. In the case of the farm, just consider it, if more and more potatoes are grown, then land progressively less suitable to potato cultivation has to be used. This raises the cost of producing extra potatoes. It is the same for manufacturers. Beyond a certain level of output, costs are likely to rise rapidly as workers have to be paid over time and as machines approach capacity working. If higher output involves higher costs of producing each unit, producers will need to get a higher price if they are to be persuaded to produce extra output. The second reason is related to the fact that the higher the price of the, the good, the more profitable it becomes to produce. Firms will thus be encouraged to produce more of it by switching from producing less profitable goods. Finally, given time, if the price of a good remains high, new producers will be encouraged to set up in production. So, total market supply thus rises. Now, let's talk about the supply curve. But before that, we should talk about the supply schedule. And let me say that the amount that producers would like to supply at various prices can be shown in a supply schedule. A supply schedule is a table showing the different quantities of a good that producers are willing and able to supply at various prices over a given time period. A supply schedule can be for an individual producer or a group, group of producers or for all producers. We talk so about the market supply schedule. This table shows a monthly supply schedule for potatoes, both for an individual farmer, farmer X, and for all farmers together, the whole market. The supply schedule can be represented graphically as a supply curve. 
a supply curve, maybe E, an individual firm supply curve, or a market curve, that is to say, that of the whole industry. This curve shows the market supply curve of potatoes. As with demand curves, price is plotted on the var vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. Each of the points from A to E, a price rise, corresponds to a figure in the last table. Thus, for example, a price rise from 60 per kilograms to 80 per kilogram will cause a movement along the supply curve from point C to point D. Total market supply will rise from 350,000 tons per month to 530,000 tons per month. Not all supply curves will be upward sloping, that is to say positively sloped. Sometimes they will be vertical or horizontal or even downward sloping. This will depend largely on the time period over which firms' response to price changes is considered. Now, let's set, see together the other determinants of land demand. Like demand, supply is not simply determined by price. The other determinants of supply are as follows. 1. The cost of production. The higher the costs of production, the less profit will be made at any price. As costs rise, firms will cut back on production, probably switching to alternative products whose costs have not risen so much. The main reasons for a change in costs are as follows. Change in input prices. Costs for production will rise if wages, raw materials prices, rents, interest rates or any other input prices rise. Change in technology. Technological advances can fundamentally alter the cost of production. Consider, for example, how the microchip revolution has changed production methods and information handling in virtually every industry in the world. Organizational changes. Various cost savings can be made in many firms by reorganizing production. Government policy. Costs will be lowered by government subsidies and raised by various taxes. The profitability of alternative products substitutes in supply. If a product which is a substitute in supply becomes more profitable to supply than before, producers are likely to switch from the first good to this alternative. Supply of the first good falls. Other goods are likely to become more profitable if their prices rise and or their costs of production fall. For instance, if the price of carrots goes up or the cost of producing carrots comes down, farmers may decide to cut down potato production in order to produce more carrots. The profitability of goods in joint supply. Sometimes when one good is produced, another good is also produced at the same time. These are said to be goods in joint supply. An example is the refining of crude oil to produce petrol. Other grade fuels will be produced as well, such as diesel and paraffin. If more petrol is produced due to a rise in demand and hence its price, then the supply of these other fuels will rise too. Nature, random shocks and other unpredictable events. In this category, we would include the weather and diseases affecting farm output, wars affecting the supply of imported raw materials, the breakdown of machinery, industrial disputes, earthquakes, floods and fire, etc. The aim of producers, a profit maximizing firm, will supply a different quantity from a firm that has a different aim, such as 
maximizing sales. For most of the time, we shall assume that firms are profit maximizers. Expectations of future price changes. If price is expected to rise, producers may temporarily reduce the amount they sell. They are likely to build up their stocks and only release them on the, onto the market when the price does rise. At the same time, they may install new machines or take on more labor, so that they can be ready to supply more when the price has risen. Eventually, the number of suppliers. If new firms enter the market, supply is likely to increase. Very good. Now, let's talk about the movements along and shifts in the supply curve. The principle here is the same as with demand curve. The effect of a change in price is illustrated by a movement along the supply curve. For example, from point D to point E in the last figure, when prices rise from 80 to 100, quantity supplies rises from 530,000 to 700,000 tons per month. If any other determinant of supply changes, the whole supply curve will shift. A rightward shift illustrates an increase in supply. A leftward shift illustrates a decrease in supply. Thus, in this figure, if the original curve is S0, or S1, sorry, the curve S2 represents an increase in supply. More is supplied at each price, whereas the curve S3 represents a decrease in supply. Less is supplied at each price. A movement along a supply curve is often referred to as a change in the quantity supplied, whereas a shift in the curve, supply curve is simply referred to as a change in supply. Now, let's sum up. When the price of a good rises, the quantity supplied per period of time will usually also rise. This applies both to individual producers' supply and to the whole market supply. 2. There are two reasons in the short-run way why a higher price encourages producers to supply more. A. They are now willing to incur the higher costs per unit associated with producing more. B. They, are, they will switch to producing this product and away from products that are now less profitable. In the long run, there is a third reason new producers will be attracted into the market. 3. The relationship between price and quantity supplied per period of time can be shown in a table or, let's say, schedule or as a graph. As with a demand curve, price is plotted on the vertical axis and quantity per pe period of time on the horizontal axis. The resulting curve of supply is upward sloping positively sloped. 4. Other determinants of supply include the cost of production, the profitability of alternative products, the profitability of goods in joint supply, random shocks and expectations of future price changes. Finally, if price changes, the effect is shown by a movement along the supply curve. We call this effect a change in the quantity supplied. If any determinant other than price changes, the effect is shown by a shift in the whole supply curve. We call this effect a change in supply. A rightward shift represents an increase in supply, and a leftward shift represents a decrease in supply. Well, this is the end of the present chapter. 
The next chapter will be entitled Price and Output Determination. Thank you very much for your attention.